Good afternoon and welcome. Make sure it's plugged in properly. Okay. Welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. Um, I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 383. So almost at 400, another 17 to go. And by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, these are on Facebook Live initially, but you may be watching this on YouTube in replay, or watching this on Facebook in replay. And uh, yeah, that's all there is to that. So each day I do a topic or a theme or talk around relationships, romance, dating, um, masculine and feminine polarity, authentic connection, all these different things. And I was reading an article today um, that triggered me and inspired me to share this today. So. The topic today is around dating terms, dating tips. One of them is pretty well known, which is ghosting. And I'll, re I'll, re I'll re explain that one in case you haven't heard of it before, because most people now know what it is. But there's two more I'm adding to the list, and these are from a woman, a writer in England. Um, her name is Re Rebecca Reed, I think her name is. And she has two more terms called submarining and zombieing. Lovely, aren't they? So I'm going to explain those terms. One, see if you experience them. Two, why they may be triggered. Three, what you can do about it. Um, and four, if I get to number four, a better way. So just so you know what's coming. And again, these are all unscripted, so let's try it on, shall we? And by the way, any questions, comments you have along the way when I'm sharing this, please comment in the comments below um, or to the side wherever you're watching this, and I'll respond. If you do this in the replay, I'll respond afterwards by responding to your comments. So let's talk about this, shall we? <laughs> Strange terms. First of all, um, ghosting has been around for a long time. That's actually a clinical term in the DSM-4 and DSM-5. And ghosting is actually was was um, named from a movie back in the 1940s um, called... Uh, actually, no, it wasn't ghosting. That was gaslighting. <laughs> Wrong term. Okay, ghosting. <laughs> gaslighting is a whole other conversation. I'm gonna do, I've done that one before. I'm not going to do that here. Ghosting, submarining, and zombieing. Lovely terms, aren't they? So, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about what each one is, and then ideally I'll actually hopefully know what the underlying psychology is to help you with that too. And again, zombieing and, um, not ghosting, but submarining were both coined by a woman named um, Rebecca Reed in England. I already not reading an article about her. So first of all, ghosting, so those who don't know what that is. Ghosting basically means that you're dating somebody and they vanish. Actually, to be honest, all three of those start that way. <laughs> ghosting basically means that they disappear as if nothing ever happened and when you're talk when you're reaching out to them like actually let me let me say this way these three terms these three experiences generally happen to women by men but it's not only that way sometimes the other way around but I want to make sure you get the flavor of this so if somebody ghosts you that basically means that they drop all communication without any um, preparation without any sense of respect and without you knowing what the hell's going on they vanish in fact, all three start that way, as I mentioned. Ghosting, they never come back. Actually, let me, let me do all three quickly, and I'll come back and go in detail levels. So ghosting, they disappear, never come back. Submarining is they disappear on you, and then show up three, four months later as if nothing had happened. Like, oh, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Let's get together this week without any expl explainer. Zombieing, and it's such a term, is the same as submarining, except they come back with a story about why they disappeared. All three of them have some serious flaws in them, as the recipient, by the way, not this and the perpetrator. They, that's all the problem too. So basically, on all three levels, the flaw in all three of those is a lack of honest communication. If someone wants to ghost, let me put you, let me put it in the driver's seat. If you were ghosting somebody else, or rather, if you didn't want to ghost somebody else, yes, if you didn't want to ghost somebody else, you would reach out to them, say, you know, thanks, but I'm not interested. I'm um, see you later. That's what it takes, like three lines, and you're done. Walk away. Ghosting and zombieing are basically... Sorry, not ghosting. <laughs> I can these terms in my head. Submarining and, and zombieing tend to be perpetrated by people who were basically maybe dating the field and met somebody, went away, and then come back because they got dumped again, so they come back to you because you didn't say yes last time. It's not respectful, as you can tell. So... These three terms will probably become more prevalent in the dating arena because they have some serious pain to them 
and they all tie to the same theme, which basically is lack of communication, lack of honesty, lack of integrity. And that is ideally things that you will weed out of your dating pool. So if somebody does any one of those three to you, I trust you'll walk away first of all, and you'll give them the, um, well, the one-fingered salute, I'm not gonna give you that on a camera, or, <laughs> or some other means of saying, see ya, not interested, go away. Because it doesn't serve you. If somebody does that to you, that's not respecting you. They're coming back to you because as far as they're concerned, you're sloppy seconds. If you know what that term is, you know what I mean. It's a lack of respect. And so, any one of those two, three experiences, the same thing's happening. Now, in the first case, which is ghosting, you hope you probably never see them again, because ghosting means they vanish. And their lack of integrity and lack of honesty to speak the truth to you is nothing to do with you, by the way. Oh yeah, that's another piece. All three of these experiences, if they happen to you, are nothing to do with you. In the sense that you're not the, the I'm watching something else show up, hang on a second. They're nothing to do with you in the sense that you don't have to take it personally. However, there's a however in this. If that happens frequently, you may want to check in with what inside yourself you're doing in that context because if it's happening repeatedly, in any, if any, let me back up one, one level higher, um, let's, let's talk to meta for a second. If, a, if an experience happens in a relationship sequentially, or it happens, or it happens um, not word, repeatedly is a better term. So if you're in a relationship and it breaks down for something happens, and you're in another relationship and the same, it breaks down the same way the next time, and the third time, the same thing happens next time. That is where you need to do some self-investigation because you're the common denominator in those three relationships or 17 relationships, if it's that many, or dates, that maybe something you want to change and tune up a little bit, so that's one thing. On the other side, which is in the dating arena where someone's doing that to you and they are the ones at fault, don't take it personally. That's their weakness, not yours. So I covered myself, make sure I covered myself on that. In the context of the zombieing and submarining, because that's when they come back in your life, I would strongly suggest they don't deserve to be in your life. That what's happened is they got um, dumped or hurt by somebody else and want to come back to you to make themselves feel better at your expense. And anybody who doesn't contact you, let me put it this way. If someone's in a relationship with you or dating you rather and they, are, they want to disappear on you, if they're not willing to communicate honestly and say, look, I'm not interested or this is not working or I need to go take care of something, um, I gotta go for some reason that hopefully is honest that's one thing but if they just vanish off the face of the earth and come back either without even saying anything had happened or making up some sort of story that they could have told you up front and even if and even if that person says to you um, I'm so sorry um, my mum got really sick and I had to go home and take care of her there was no time to text you or call you whilst they were away to see the, the point about this is, and the key thing is, is that where do you rank in their mind to stay in communication with you? If they are disappearing on you without telling you something, if it's because something major happened in their life, if you don't rank in their awareness, that's why they didn't contact you. That means they didn't think of it that much of you. So why would you think that much of them? And I'm being blunt about this because so many people fall in this trap. So many women fall in this trap because they get into the ideas of hopes and dreams of somebody, they've been out a few dates, and they get all excited about possibilities with this man they met, and it's all wonderful, and then he vanishes, and they're all heartbroken. Well, maybe the picture they saw wasn't the same one you saw. And that's a whole other, convers whole other conversation to get into about um, prospects, and um, what's the other word I'm looking for? Um, okay, wait a second, what's that word? <laughs> Expectations, perhaps. It's a better word. So, if they vanish on you, again, 90% of the time, it's up is their lack of integrity It's doing it, not because of you. I mentioned about the 10% about doing some self-work, that's another piece. But the piece about it is, is that if that happens to you, they don't get a second chance. And I'm serious about this. If you let them back in because they didn't honestly communicate with you when they left and give you any sense of what was going on, the level of respect they have for you is a lot lower than you want. I hope you got that. This is a powerful piece for a lot of people, is that you're, that maybe not you, but maybe somebody you know, your self-esteem, your self-value is often mirrored back to you by what's around you. If you don't value yourself, you're gonna get trodden on, or overridden, or run over, 
or submarine or zombie <laughs> in relationship arena. So to really put yourself first, to raise the standards for yourself, raise the stakes for yourself, and raise the vibration of where you live at, if that happens to you again, it will not touch you. And that person does it to you, won't get a look back in, they'll be out. And I strongly, strongly recommend, ladies especially, to do the work necessary to raise up your vibration, to raise up your standards, and to honor yourself enough that you won't settle for a relationship, or a date even, with somebody who doesn't keep in communication with you. You know, I've, I've said for a long time, way before I started doing this, this work, that what three of the primary qualities of a relationship are trust, honesty, and communication. And they still hold true now that I coach this stuff. <laughs> I, feel, I started raising this about 15 years ago, before I started doing this work. And if you can't have trust, honesty, and communication with somebody you're dating, don't date them. Period. Doesn't matter how attractive they are. Doesn't matter how much you want to get into bed. Seriously. If you want to have a fling, have a fling, but know that's what you're having. But that date won't lead to a relationship if there's no trust, honesty, or communication there. That's simple. And the paradigm of coasting and zombieing and submarining these terms is crack me up, are really messages to you that the people who are looking for looking out for you are the right ones. Now, again, if that happens repeatedly, I mentioned doing the inner work to raise your own standards. The second thing I'll say as well is that if you're putting out something that's attracting that, maybe you want to look at what you're putting out there energetically. Maybe you want to change your dating profile or your dating pictures, or better yet, do the work inside to change your own um, ability to attract. I have a program for that. I'm not going to market it here. If you can find out more, you can message me. But the reality is that your choices, your level of dating, really starts from where you live and where you are. It's the inner work is where it starts from. And personally, I've become very aware, and I was in a conversation yesterday about this. <laughs> um, if you don't, if you hadn't watched yesterday's, um, I did a Facebook Live yesterday about settling, which is kind of related to this. But after that, um, yesterday evening, I did a Facebook, a dual Facebook Live with a friend of mine, a new friend of mine, talking about celibacy. That went really interesting. So if you want to have an interesting conversation, watch an interesting conversation over an hour about celibacy, sex, and other things like that, and masturbation too. Um, I recommend watching that one. That was yesterday. But to, but to summarize today, I'm running off tangent there for a second. But we were talking then about integrity, because I was mentioning in that conversation yesterday, just double checking I did, that for many of us, or for many people, celibacy is, is actually something they don't look at because they'd rather have sex with somebody that doesn't work for them than they'd be celibate. Like, you're not willing to face being alone and not having sex for a few days, a few weeks, a few months. I mentioned I've been I've celibacy for a long time, so I can play with that one a bit. But the point back to this is, the point is about this and getting back to the point. Being a high esteem, so I'm watching the, look at the words, being a high esteem single person, raising your standards and choosing dates wisely, carefully, and clearly from a strongly intuitive wisdom place will raise the game for you, raise the stakes for you, and raise your dating ability massively. Which I think one of us, that was pretty good. <laughs> That's really the big key I want to put on the table for you to remind you that you can raise your own standards. You're not, you're not required, as I said yesterday's broadcast, Again, I'll watch that if you don't have watched it yet, about settling. That settling isn't required. It may be what you believe because you were raised that way or trained that way, but you don't have to settle for anything less than you desire. So in this case, if someone ghosts you, zombies you, or looks like a torpedo, or submarines you, using those terms, they don't deserve you. So really get clear about what those terms are and then walk away. Because your um, opportunity for love is much better than you've been giving yourself credit for to this point. And that I think will make it make it make my point. I thought this could be a longer talk, but apparently it's not that it's not that uh, expansive, it's pretty simple. So if you're dealing with those three terms, you're having that experience in your relationships, you now know what to do about them. And you also know now what may be triggering it. Oh, I didn't mention that. Yes, let me go back and finish that place. I didn't answer the question to that one. If someone does that to you, what's going on for them, most likely, is they're not being honest. As I mentioned, the three qualities, honesty, trust, and communication, those three things are missing with somebody who's ghosting you, submarining you, or zombieing you. They're not willing to communicate, they're not being honest, and they don't trust that they can even say it to you. That's their shit, their stuff, their crap, not yours. Yes, did you use that term? 
better you walk on, walk away, move forward and get what you want. That's what I recommend highly. Um, that person has their own work to do. It's not your job to save them. Please don't. It's not your job to advise them either. It's your job to take care of yourself. Number one priority. So it means your dating choices are in support of you taking care of yourself. Not the, so make sure you keep that in mind when you're going on dates, when you're swiping, when you're going to see matchmakers, whatever you're doing. Really, really focus on yourself. Support yourself and get what you deserve. Don't settle, as I said yesterday. And with that, thank you for watching. Um, quick summary of the information. This is my 330, 383rd, boy, 383rd Facebook Live in a row. Um, all of these you can find and watch and binge watch if you want <laughs> on my business page on Facebook which is the Barry Selby to author and it's actually a blue shirt on that page so you know which one it is um, or on my YouTube channel we're on YouTube now which is uh, Barry Selby is the, mess is the channel message of the masculine is the playlist and also on my website which is barryselby.com all my social media is Barry Selby by the way um, I've got a video blog there where all these live if you want help in this area and you're getting stuck and you want to know how to date better choose better have better relationships on my website on the left hand side is a thing a button thing in the menu called let's chat click on that sign up for discovery session my gift to you um, that's it and if you know if you should watch this please share it with them if you have any questions comments please put it below I'll respond after I sign off and uh, you know where to find me with that I wish you well tomorrow will be 384 I'm not sure the topic yet this one came up 10 minutes before I sat down so sometimes they come last minute but I think I trust there was value in it for you and hopefully you'll use this in your life with that I wish you a pleasant evening oh homework I give homework every day. I didn't give you homework yet. Damn. <laughs> homework. Hmm. I mentioned in the broadcast. Here we go. I mentioned in the broadcast about repeat cycles where you've been doing the same, getting the same feedback again and again. If you have, so it's only it's a conditional homework. If you've had the same experience in dating experiences where the men disappeared on you for whatever reason, whatever whatever label it was, and it happened repeatedly, different men. Do some self-investigation, meaning check back inside about where you were in those relationships. What did you say, do, or not say, or do that you think may be the common thread? If you know what that is, you'll get clear about what not to do that again. If you want help with that, message me. That's your homework, conditionally, as it were. And if you haven't had the experience, nothing to do tonight. You've got, you got a free night, no homework. How about that? <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me, as always. Um, I'm at your service. And I wish you, to wish you well, take care of yourselves as always, and I'll see you again tomorrow.